So my name is Claudio Carvalho. Uh, I work for IBM and I would like to talk about uh, remote attestation of confidential virtual machines using a virtual TPM we have worked on. Uh, I'll, be, I'll, I'll give you a, a really brief introduction and then we can discuss more about the, uh, have a discussion. So let me first try to understand how can I go to the next one here. Okay, why do we need a virtual TPM in confidential virtual machines? Uh, the trusted platform module or the TPM, um, it's in an in industry in standard and um, it's used as remote, a remote um, uh, as root, I'm sorry, it's, it's used as root of trust for, for some of the services such as um, measured boot and uh, uh, remote attestation. And the, some, the virtual TPMs plays the same role for virtual machines. Uh, but the virtual TPMs that we use in virtual machines cannot be used uh, safely in confidential virtual machines because the hypervisor would have access to the uh, VTPM state and the hypervisor is not trusted uh, based on the threat model of a confidential virtual machine. So what we do is uh, we run the virtual TPM inside of the, the confidential virtual machine. Um, and with that, um, the confidential virtual machine memory is encrypted um, while it's in use, and then the hypervisor is, is not able to uh, have access to the VTPM state. But to be more specifically, we run it in, inside of the SVSM. Um, the SVSM is, as you already know, it's, it's a firmware and it runs before OVMF. It runs with the highest uh, VM privilege level, which is VMPL0. And with that, other softwares that <coughs> runs with other VM, VM privilege levels would not have access to the VTPM state. It would be protected. Um, so, um, but in order to have this VTPM, uh, we have to make a few changes to the TPM driver. Uh, and because now the TPM communication needs to go to the VTPM running in the SVSM. Um, and um, with that, also, we, we are able to reuse the existing TPM tools, uh, the user space TPM tools, and also IMA. We are able to use OVMF code related to the TPM that populates the, the TPM PCRs. If you're interested more on the VTPM, you can have a look at that PR that I submitted to the Coconut SVSM. I should say that it's basically, um, it's currently it's running in, in, in the SVSM CPL0. We don't have CPL3 support yet, but when, when we have CPL3 support, uh, it would be easy to move it to uh, running CPL3 in the SVSM because the interface would be the same. So another interesting thing to talk about is this, this VTPM state. I said that the VTPM state is secure, but actually it depends on what we do with this VTPM state. Um, uh, the VTPM state, state is basically seeds, the key hierarchies, and any other object that we store in the TPM and V, for example. Uh, an interesting question is how much of this VTPM state we need to persist across boots? And it really depends on the application, it depends on what we, we need, the application needs to do with the test state. Um, and, um, but for example, if, if we need to persist a VTPM state, generally speaking, we need to go through some steps. Uh, first, we need to generate the state, and we, then we need to encrypt, um, generate the state, I mean, the manufacturer process, generate the seeds, and then we need to encrypt that initial state uh, and securely persist the trial location outside of the confidential virtual machine because if the confidential virtual machine crashes, we will not have access to this to this state. And then on every boot, we need to uh, get that encrypted state, decrypt it, inject into the into the, the, the confidential virtual machine, and also load it. But load only if the confidential virtual machine is 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 in the expected initial state. In other words, we need to do an early pre-attestation. And then if you make any changes to that state, we need just to um, um, 
persist it back to its original state, to its original location. So what I'm trying to say is, whatever this state goes, we need to secure it, and it would be difficult to secure in every steps. We started then, I uh, start to, started to explore other ideas such as, uh, okay, uh, what if you have a VPPM state that is ephemeral? Um, and by ephemeral, I mean, oh, there is a, by ephemeral, I mean that the VTPM state is manufactured on every boot. And the VTPM state also doesn't leave um, the confidential virtual machine. And with that, it would be much easier to make it to um, make it secure, I would say, uh, because it doesn't leave the, the confidential virtual machine. And the first thing that we, that we try to explore is the remote attestation. And we are able to use to do remote attestation using a thermal uh, VTPM. We have a proof of concept for that using Keylime. Um, in the other slides deck, I had this the link of the, you can see the, 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 the V2 in the, uh, in the LPC. Right yeah. Huh? I said we'll upload the right set of slides. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, you can see the link there and it's, I, I, but I, I think I, I should not go to the, all the, the details. Um, first, how, how much time we have? Eight minutes. Maybe we should start discussing and then if you have time, we can go through the, the, the demo. I can try to, to get the, the link here. But basically, just to give you a, an idea what Keylime does is just it, it does a, there is a setup, uh, a Keylime setup, initial set, setup, and then the registrar, uh, there is the Keylime attestation tool, and it it runs on every boot and register the, uh, the confidential virtual machine. And then it, it goes to the next step, which is really, really the verifier that uh, takes the policy and enforces the policy to say if the confidential virtual machine is or not uh, trusted. Uh, but basically it, it has to go through the launch measurement, uh, validating the initial state of the confidential virtual machine and then it goes to, um, uh, it needs to validate the, the virtual TPM, authentic or not. And then um, it goes through the uh, measured boot, uh, um, validating all the way to, or to the guest OS. And it can also um, do some uh, do uh, runtime attestation, but for the demo uh, that, are, that we recorded, uh, it doesn't do the uh, runtime attestation. If you want to know more about the attestation report, you can go to that PR. And we discuss all the uh, services that we can do with ephemeral VTPMs in this article that we published. Uh, for example, how, to, how can we do uh, full disk encryption um, using an ephemeral VTPM? Okay, so I think at this point we are Open for discussions, let's say. Yeah, we have a chat question. You can read it if you want, but you can read it too. Uh, they want to know whether you're socializing with VTPM designs or collaborating with other platform providers or cloud service providers or other stakeholders, because there are many design parameters that seem to benefit from a wider alignment. Um, and I have to ask that question, which is way general. What does it mean? Because the, T the VTPM is a standard thing from Microsoft, everybody starts with the same thing. The TCG has one more uh, TPM design reference implementation it just attempted to implement in Rust, but it has no code. So it's really only one place to start. And so what does the question about collaboration mean? Since this is specifically designed to work with the AMD SVSM and no other cloud, no other platform has an SVSM currently. So if the guy who asked this question could actually ask it over audio. I would, uh, we, we might actually get more out of it. Hello? Oh, he's typing. I have no audio. In 
the meantime, we should ask everybody else. Yeah. What's the difference between the, uh, the SMP attestation report and the DSM generated content? Um, what do you mean? Um, the, the content. The content. You, you add anything to the, to the, to the mm -hmm. report? Yeah, the SSM spec when we request a VMPL zero, an attestation report from VMPL zero, it also we also get some information from the VTPM, um, some VTPM information, and that's the, a a hash of the endorsement, the public part of the endorsement key, and with that we can use to we can use that to to know if the VTPM is is the right one that you should be talking to or not. So basically, it's the it's the uh, pure cost generated application report plus the VTPM. Yeah, data. yeah. Okay. There is a, there is a, a field in the when we request a report, there is a field that we can uh, put in the report, and then we use that field. Uh, we calculate a hash of the AK pub and push it put it there. <coughs> there's it, there's it one gets David helps us from this way more than two that. So the SVSM has a load of possible protocol. VTPM is a defined protocol, but it has a way of attesting through the PSP at VMPL zero that this SVSM has support for these protocols. VTPM's protocol report is designed to contain the public key, public key code and PDF that binds the PDM absolutely to the SVSM. Yeah, to the SSM running in that James. Yeah. Sorry, no eyes in the back of the head. There are some uh, open source frameworks, including one from VMware, uh, that are certifier frameworks for verifying the attestation report that SMP generates. Mm -hmm. Are you thinking about using that in some way as a combined thing? Because at the end of the day, the owner is going to want to know that both the VMPL zero attestation report is genuine and the VTPM uh, stuff is genuine. So is there some way to combine those? Chart may have one. So we have a little bit of the problem with the keyword, which is the same as that probably was talking about. Uh, you have to ascertain that the application report correct, what does access to the VTSP and the sign will be correct. And then you have to compare validation with the policy, which is what I was asking for the question. So everything together, we didn't use the VMware protocol, but the protocol is well described in the end of the application. So writing it down in Python didn't uh, take us a lot of time. Uh, I think for um, the VMware certifier, I don't think that there's a, you basically fundamentally have two stages of application here, one normal hardware thing. The, the verifier from VMware I think is really only to help with the first stage at the moment, at least, and I don't know their plans beyond that. So I don't think we've lost the problems here yet. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Nice catch. <laughs> a quick question. It wasn't very clear from the beginning, but maybe I'm not sure. Uh, you get VTPM instances uniquely paired with the confidential VM instance. There is a one to one. Yeah. yeah. Yes. There is only one SVSM running in that uh, VM. So when we get the attestation report, it ties uh, that instance of the SVSM. Oh, so it's always a VMPM. It cannot be a separate yeah. confidential VM. And then, because it's also a VMP and it's shared in terms of memory management, it's using yeah. the same key as that confidential VM. Yeah. 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 Right. Last one. Uh, so, just to make sure I understand this correctly, uh, the hypervisor is still responsible for, you depend on the hypervisor to transport communications from the VMP and SVM. Yeah, that's the same. Yeah. But that's all encrypted with the memory encryption key. Yeah. So the has, but the it does know the timing. Of this. So if the hypervisor knows this measurement will occur at this time, can the hypervisor just drop that price on the floor? Or is there any verification that the guest knows that that price actually went through to the SVSM? The, the, it's, uh, we encrypt the, the communication using AES-GCM, so we would be able to detect that. Right, but if I drop, so if I drop it, uh, the communication flow would then be valid from then on? Yeah. We, we don't have much resource as we have in the kernel with timers. So for now, we are just invalidating the key, and we won't, we won't be able to communicate to the uh, uh, PSP to get a report anymore. Okay, but if the 
you then ask the DTPM for a remote attestation that failed. You can all be able to ask for So, okay, so it fails. Close. Mm -hmm. So you close the open. No more communication. Okay. Thank you, Thank you so much.